Good evening. Welcome to our service of evening prayer for the eve of Canada Day. Tonight I've taken much of our liturgy from the prayer book of the Anglican Church of New Zealand. We begin with a sentence of the day. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one, in whom my soul delights, says the Lord. I've put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. Brothers and sisters in Christ, this evening let us praise and worship the God who has called us together. Let us celebrate God's majesty and delight in the wonder of God's love. Together we'll confess our sins and we'll receive assurance that we are forgiven. As the scriptures are read, we can allow God's word to speak to us and ponder its meaning for our lives. In our prayers, we'll give thanks for God's goodness. We'll pray for others as well as ourselves, and we'll offer our lives anew in Christ's service. We do these things because we believe in the presence among us of our Saviour Jesus Christ and in the mighty power of the Holy Spirit. So a prayer of praise. Great and wonderful are your deeds, O God, Lord God the Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O Sovereign of the nations. Who shall not revere and praise your name, O Lord? For you alone are holy. All nations shall come and worship in your presence, for your just dealings have been revealed. To the one who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honour, Glory and might forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honour, power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Now let's hear these words of scripture. They apply to us individually and as a nation. If we claim to be sinless, we are self-deceived and strangers to the truth. If we confess our sins, we trust that God may be trusted to forgive our sins and cleanse us from every kind of wrong. Spirit of God, search our hearts. Let us remember our need for God's forgiveness, saying these words. Almighty and merciful God, we've sinned against you in thought, word and deed. We've not loved you with our whole heart. We've not loved our, we have not loved others as our Saviour Christ loves us. We are truly sorry. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct us to what we shall be, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. And now may Almighty God, who pardons all who truly repent, forgive you your sins. Strengthen you by the Holy Spirit and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. A reading from Psalm 36. Your love, O Lord, reaches to the heavens and your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like strong mountains. Your justice like the great deep. You save both mortals and beasts, O Lord. How priceless is your love, O God! Your people take refuge under the shadow of your wings. They feast upon the abundance of your house. You give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the well of life, and in your light we see light. Continue your loving kindness to those who know you, and your favour to those who are true of heart. Let not the foot of the proud come near us nor let the hand of the wicked push us aside. Hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. And now a reading from the prophet Isaiah chapter 32. Today's reading is the passage from the Hebrew scriptures that's been appointed for Canada Day. The prophet Isaiah wrote these words while the Israelite leadership was in exile in Babylon. He looked forward to a restitution of Israel as an independent nation. But more than just becoming independent again, he looked forward to a time of justice and righteousness in the nation. Not like what had gone before, when corrupt and bad government had led to the nation's defeat at the hands of the, Babylon at the, at the, hands of the Babylonian army. 
And now the reading. See, a king will reign in righteousness. Princes will rule with justice. Each will be like a hiding place from the wind, a covert from the tempest, like streams of water in a dry place, like the shade of a great rock in a weary land. Then the eyes of those who have sight will not be closed, and the ears of those who have hearing will listen. The minds of the rash will have good judgment, and the tongues of stammerers will speak readily and distinctly. A fool will no longer be called noble, nor a villain will be said to be honourable. Then justice will dwell in the wilderness, and righteousness abide in the fruitful field. The effect of righteousness will be peace, and the result of righteousness, quietness and trust forever. My people will abide in a peaceful habitation, says the Lord, in secure dwellings and in quiet resting places. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Now Canada Day this year is more subdued than usual as a result of the tragic circumstances that have been revealed in the past month. Hatred and racism have reared their very ugly heads in the appalling discoveries of First Nations children who were buried in unmarked graves on the grounds of former residential schools. And hatred and racism are not just things of the past. The murder of the Afsal family in London, Ontario shows that we have much work to do in our own time. Voices have been raised as to whether we should simply can voices have been raised as to whether we should simply cancel Canada, Canada Day as a mark of our shame and repentance. Some cities, such as Victoria, have taken exactly that step. But Marcus G. wrote a balanced opinion piece about 10 days ago in the Globe and Mail that took a different approach. And I want to quote part of what he wrote. I quote, Reflecting on the past is a good thing. An unexamined national life is not worth living. This country has much to regret, from the internment of Japanese Canadians during the Second World War, to the refusal to take in Jewish refugees fly, fleeing from Nazi Germany, to the decision to tear indigenous children from their families and send them away to be schools in what were not often not much more than juvenile prisons. But Canada has much to be proud of too. Its evolution from a ward state of the British Empire to a strong, independent, unified nation state. Its role in defeating Nazism holding back communism and combating terrorism. Its successful absorption of millions of immigrants from around the world. Canada is rightly admired by people everywhere for its openness and for its stability. With its democracy guaranteed by a patriated constitution and a robust charter of rights, it often seems like an island of good sense in a world gone mad. If Canada isn't worthy of praise on its birthday, then no country is. <clears throat> Therefore, examining its defects past and present should not lead us to overlook its strengths. Every nation, like every person, has some of both. Failures and triumphs, faults and virtues, shameful moments and admirable ones. It should be viewed in the round, taking the bad with the good, for one does not cancel the other. End of quote. What I like about this is its sense of balance. Yes, this year in particular, we should contemplate our national faults, as well as enjoying our backyard barbecues. And I applaud the likes of my own city, Guelph, in saying that this year is not the occasion for celebratory fireworks. And so I end these comments by asking you to recite with me this affirmation composed by the United Church of Canada. Creating God, as we mark the anniversary of Confederation of Canada this week, we remember and give thanks for the people who've been stewards of this land since time immemorial. We commit ourselves to the work of justice, healing and reconciliation. Together we dream about the country that we hope to become, a country where all are free, 
to be their best selves. Amen. Now as we return to the liturgy of the prayer book of New Zealand, we sing, we say together the song of Simeon. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people. A light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. And now a time of prayer. Make your ways known upon earth, O God, your saving, your saving power among all nations. Renew your church in holiness and help us to serve you with joy. Guide the leaders of this and every nation that justice may prevail here and throughout the world. Let not the needy, O God, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Make us instruments of your peace let your glory be over all the earth. The collect appointed by the Anglican Church of Canada for Canada Day. Please say it together. Almighty God, whose wisdom and love are over all, accept the prayers we offer for our nation. Give integrity to its citizens and wisdom to those in authority, that harmony and justice may be secured in obedience to your will, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We take this prayer from the New Zealand prayer book. It's called a version of the Lord's Prayer. Eternal Spirit, earth maker, pain bearer, life giver, source of all that is and all that shall be, father and mother of us all, loving God in whom is heaven. May the hallowing of your name echo throughout the universe. The way of your justice be followed by all the peoples of the world. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and test, strengthen us. From trials too great to endure, spare us. From the grip, grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in glory in the power that is love, now and forever. Amen. We end with a collect for this evening. Gracious God, you've given us much today. Grant us also a thankful spirit. Into your hands we commend ourselves and those we love. Be with us still, and when we take our rest, renew us for the service of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. In darkness and in light, in trouble and in joy, help us, Heavenly Father, to trust your love, to serve your purpose, and to praise your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now may the Almighty and merciful God bless us and keep us now and forever. We go in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>